Hi everyone, I'm here today with digital literacy educator and mental toughness and family coach, Carol Loy. And we have this special segment and it's called, What Would Carol Say? So, I have a few statements, uh, presumably from children between 9 to 12, and it's got to do with sex. Okay, okay, here we go. The first one is, I had a wet dream last night. I feel guilty. What should I do? Whatever that you're feeling, it means that your body is working well. And I think it's okay to talk to your mom about it. Your mom and your dad are there for you to discuss this. And if it happens again, right, uh, your daddy and mommy will be able to talk you through it and uh, discuss with you, you know, how to, how to uh, manage it the next time it happens. It, it just remember that, you know, your body is working well. Okay, the second one is, will I develop milk when I develop breasts? That is a very good question. Well, there are milk ducts in our breasts and those milk ducts are activated when we carry a baby in us. There are things that change in our body. So at some point, when you become a mummy, the parts of your body that produces milk, which are your breasts, will produce milk. But until such time, when you become a mummy, you will not have milk. So rest assured <laughs> that you will not go to school with wet shirts. <laughs> yeah. The third one is, I don't like my new pubic hair. Should I shave it? That is a very good question. I think hairs are there for a purpose, right? Uh, and what makes you uncomfortable about the hair? It's prickly, itchy. It's okay. weird. Hairs are there for a purpose. Okay. Even if you we do stuff to get rid of it, it will grow back. Um, and it might be itchy if we get rid of it. And, you know, uh, it, it serves a purpose. Okay. The fourth one is, I love my teacher. Can I marry him or her? I won't say ask your teacher, right? Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, there is a season for everything. Now your teacher is there to teach you what you need to learn in school. You know, you can like your teacher as somebody who is very kind to you, but it doesn't mean that we need to get married to the teacher. Uh, and so there could be someone else that would be just as nice, if not nicer than your teacher. Mm. Does a boy pee inside a girl during sex? Usually, boys do not pass urine inside a girl when they have sex. When they have sex, uh, their body uh, works in a different way that the boy will not be able to urinate, right? Um, but there would be other sensations that comes uh, during sex. Yep, so the answer is no, the boy will not be able to urinate inside a girl. And that's it! Yay! Was that okay? Yeah. Does it answer? The <laughs> yes, I, I think it did. Like, did it make you uncomfortable? No. No? Okay, but you just have to be very careful, right? With the words that you use as well. And did I sound careful or did I sound... <laughs> uh, you, you did yeah, sound like... careful. Like, you were very, you, you were very uh, mindful about the words that you're using and how you're explaining it. Um, but I think that's how we sort of figure it out as well. Because... It's always a struggle, right? How much to tell, how much, how much information can they handle and yeah. it differs depending on the child part, as well. Part of me was trying to also not give the answer straight away uh, yeah. and I tried to ask questions. Mm. I had to withhold myself from immediately. I mean, most of the questions I jump in immediately but you know, I should have asked for understanding of the words. Yeah. Like the last question, I should have, un I should have like, asked for understanding. What do you mean? What do you understand about sex? In a real situation, if a child did have this question for you, that you would ask a bit more questions to yeah. establish the context. Should, yeah. So then you would know sort of how much the child yes, knows correct. and can handle and how much yeah. you should... It's speak. almost like a dance. Cater to their understanding and not too much yeah. that they would, you know, get shocked or... Yeah. yeah. Or lead to more questions for that matter. Taking the lead from the kids would be the best yeah, approach. Thank you so much, Carol. Now, Thank before you. you go, I've got a gift for you. And um, it's hidden in the box at the back, which you probably didn't notice. So, this is a clue of what it is. Um, I've turned it on already. 
turn on. No pun intended. Yeah. Chada. Oh. So actually, it looks better when it's not lighted. I see. Um, it's okay. a planet so, lamp with oh. uh colors, and then you can choose the color, and oh, you can so sort cool. of oh, get out. So you can okay. hug it, All right. and oh. you can. And I wanted to so give cute. this to you because I think uh, what you're doing is. Giving light to a lot of parents, oh, thank you so much. empowering them with knowledge on how to go through this really tough parenting journey. So I hope this will remind you of our little chat and that you continue to do the wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you so much. This is so meaningful. Thank, thank you, really Carol. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Now, our conversation is already up on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So I'll say, don't, don't listen to it. Because you've got to have an open mind if you want to listen to our conversation. Um, but actually, please listen to it and tell us what you think. Share your comments with us and we'll see you in the comment section in that episode. <laughs>